What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and in today we're talking one last time, I promise it's the last time, about my 2017 Ford F-150 leased vehicle. So we had uh, so many people asking questions uh, in our last video that we talked about um, what it actually cost me to the penny to own this vehicle over the last 35 months. Um, by the way, if you want to watch that video, that's gonna be linked right there in the cards. So make sure you check out that video if you have any questions about it. But the main question that we were getting is, what happens uh, if I'm in a lease and I wanna get out of a lease? And I've had this question even before that video was posted. So we thought this would be a good opportunity to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, so I'm not gonna go over the numbers like we did in that last video, but this particular vehicle was done on a 36 month red carpet lease with Ford Motor Credit Company. Now keep in mind, all these other credit uh, companies are gonna be totally different. If you've leased a Dodge or if you've leased a Chevrolet, it's gonna, it might be or could be the same, but it might be completely different. I'm primarily speaking in terms of Ford Motor Credit Company. Um, first off, I will tell you that Ford Motor Credit Company was fantastic on this particular uh, lease. It was easy to get it approved. Um, the paperwork, the, the approval was instant. Um, and uh, it really, I've just, I've called Ford Credit a couple of different times when I thought I was gonna keep this thing for the Bronco. And I said, hey, I'm just curious, can I extend my lease to wait to the Bronco? Sure, not a problem. I mean, their customer service is fantastic. Um, now, obviously I'm not extending the lease now that I'm selling this thing back and trading it in for something else. But anyways, let's talk a little bit about what it looks like to turn in your lease early and what kind of penalties you need to understand there. So when you lease your particular F-150 or any Ford vehicle through Ford Motor Credit Company, um, you can do a couple of different things. You can either sign up with a sign and drive, meaning you sign paperwork and then start making payments, um, or you can do your first payment and your upfront fees, um, which once again, it'd be like your, your um, first payment, uh, maybe a dock fee if there is one associated with that particular dealership and any other small fees that are on the front end. And then from there, you'd have 30 more, 35 more payments after that. Um, but let's say that you are 12 months or 14 months in on your lease and on a 36 month lease, you're about halfway through it and you want to trade your vehicle in. At that point in time, you do have the ability to trade that vehicle in, in at any time. Uh, so just like a normal finance purchase, let's say if I buy the vehicle, finance it over 72 months, if I ever want to trade that vehicle in, there's a payoff, the vehicle's worth X number of dollars, and the difference is either the equity or the negative equity. Um, and, and so that you have that option on a purchase. It works the same way on a lease in 90% of the situation. So in the first, uh, as long as you're not within the last 120 days of that lease, you can trade the vehicle in just like it was a purchase. There will be a payoff amount on that particular Ford Motor Credit lease. And at that point, basically what you do is you say, hey, this is the payoff. You take it to your Ford dealer or sell it to somebody and you find out what the vehicle is worth and the difference, just like a purchase, is gonna be your equity, meaning that if, if I, uh, let me use my real numbers that I've got going on right now. So if I wanted to buy the vehicle right now, my lease uh, payoff would be uh, right at $32,000, $33,000. I'm using round numbers. And if I wanted to trade it right in right now, 37.5 is the current valuation on the vehicle. So that means that I've got about $42, $4,300 worth of equity that I can use towards my next purchase. Now, the opposite can happen. If, if the payoff is $30,000 and the vehicle is only worth $20,000, there's going to be $20,000 worth of negative equity that you'll have to roll into the next financing or you'd have to pay cash to get yourself out of that. Uh, so there's a couple different ways uh, that, that go about that. So I guess what I'm saying on a 36 month lease, that the first 32 payments, you can do just like a normal purchase. You can get out of it at any point in time that you want to. Where it gets tricky with Ford Motor Credit Company is in the last 120 days of ownership. So uh, 120 days up until your termination date, you cannot trade that vehicle in. What you have to do um, is a couple of things. Either pay your remaining payments out. So like in, for instance, in this particular situation, uh, my payments are like 523, I think, off the top of my head, um, and I've got one payment remaining. I can pay that 523, hand the vehicle in, walk away, assuming I don't have any major damage or wear and tear, excessive wear and tear on the vehicle. Um, I don't want to do that because my payoff, I have the ability to have equity in this situation. So I don't wanna pay my remaining payment because then I have to just turn it in and walk away and I have no equity, I have no negative equity, but I'm guaranteed scot-free. That's one of the things I do like about the lease is that as long as you're not gonna go over the miles and as long as you're not gonna use excessively wear and tear on the vehicle, you are guaranteed no negative equity if you do the lease all the way through. 
that's kind of nice. So if you know you're not going to go over the miles, and you can always put more miles on there than you thought, but if you know you're not going to go over the miles, you know you're not going to excessively wear and tear the vehicle, guaranteed no negative equity after the end of three years or two years if you do a two-year lease. It works the same way. One question that comes up a lot on the lease vehicle is like what happens at the end of the lease, the wear and tear, as you probably heard before. So like this particular vehicle, it does have a scratch right here. Uh, it looks like this particular scratch is going to buff out. Um, but even if it didn't, there are tolerances that Ford Motor Credit Company will actually give you. Uh, so you can see some scratches right there. They're light uh, and some of these will buff out and some of them won't. Uh, you've got another one right there. But the idea there is Ford Motor Credit Company has uh, actual tolerances that says, hey, if the scratch or the ding is within this size and this depth, then it's, it's considered normal wear and tear. Where you get into some problems is if you have some excessive normal wear and tear, meaning like if this scratch was, you know, this long instead of this long, then it may not be included in that tolerance level. Uh, but the good news is Ford Motor Credit Company does have something that they call wear care uh, that allows you to cover much larger things and it also includes the cost of tires. Uh, so that's another thing that most people don't realize on a lease is that yes, if your tires fall within a certain limitation uh, of tire tread left, then you will have to buy another set of tires. So factor that in as you're considering doing a lease versus a purchase and how many miles you're gonna drive. If you're gonna drive 50,000 miles a year, one, the lease payment might not work out for you, but two, you're gonna have to buy tires for that vehicle near the term of the lease anyways. So this particular situation, I'm taking these tires off and I've got the factory takeoffs on them pop right back on there. And guess what? Now I don't have to worry about tread limitations. I'm good. I've still got like 99% of tread left on the factory takeoff wheels and tires. Uh, but that is something that you need to know is wear and tear, there are going to be tolerance and the nice part is, is long before the lease is up, you can actually call, call Ford Credit. They can send someone to your house and they can do a lease end evaluation and they will do an evaluation and say, hey, you're going to have problems with this. You might want to claim this under your insurance before the lease actually comes due. So there's a lot of ways to skin the cat, uh, no pun intended. But yeah, that is something you need to know is wear and tear is a real thing. And it also goes for the interior as well. If you're slicing holes in the vehicle, in the seat, that's you're going to get hit for that. But then again, if you're purchasing that vehicle and you're not going to keep it for very long, you're going to turn around and sell it back anyways, you're also going to run into issues there because the valuation of the vehicle doesn't matter if it's leased or purchased. It just matters the condition of the vehicle. Another great question we've had a lot of people ask is mileage. So let's say you do a 15,000 mile per year lease and you drive less than 15,000 miles. Uh, let's walk the camera around to the other side. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Uh, but my particular lease vehicle, I did a contract for a total of 45,000 miles. And as you can come around and see, you can see that I've did, I think it's right at 32,000 miles on this particular vehicle. Am I going to get a credit back for that leasing, the, those miles that go unused? Absolutely not. Those are burned in the wind, unfortunately. Now there is an exception about that. If you end up doing a high mileage lease, meaning that you go over 18,000 miles, you can actually pre-purchase mileage. So let's say you know that I drive 20,000 miles a year, 25,000 miles a year. You can actually make that vehicle fit into your leasing um, by purchasing because the, the lease intervals, it goes 10,500, uh, 12,000, 13,500. It goes up in 1,500 mile increments all the way up from 10,500 all the way up to 18,000 miles. Um, when you go over that 18,000 miles and you know it on the front end, you can pre-purchase those miles. Um, and at the time I'm recording this video, you can actually get a credit back for those extra miles that you've purchased. But since this falls under a 15,000 mile per year lease and not over 18,000, then I don't get any credit back for those. The only time you get a credit back for miles that go unused is if they are purchased above and beyond the normal 18,000 miles per year lease contract. In this particular situation, um, I was able to say, okay, I've got one payment remaining, I can turn it in, walk away, but I have no equity, no negative equity, but I have the ability to buy that vehicle for I think 31 and some change, 31, 495 if my memory serves me right. After I pay taxes, because I'm within my four remaining payments, I'm within that 120 day window, my options are limited to two, pay my remaining payment, walk away, or I can buy the vehicle for what Ford Motor Credit Company says that I can buy it for. So I literally have to buy it for $31,491. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pay it, I'm gonna buy it for 31,491. 
and then I'm gonna, when I do that, I have to pay tax on it. I have to pay any kind of fees that are associated with just a normal purchase of a vehicle. Um, and that turns out to be in about $33,000 if my memory serves me right. So if that's the case, I'm, I'm spending $33,000. The value of that vehicle right now is $37,500. So by definition, that is where my $4,200 worth of equity come from. So I guess what I'm saying that if you're deciding to lease a vehicle, and this is not a pitch for leasing, um, because yes, this vehicle is leased, but my next vehicle, which we'll name nameless for right now, stay tuned, stay subscribed if you want to know what that is, um, but it's going to be a purchase. So I'm not like all gung-ho about leasing. It works in some situations, it doesn't in other. Um, but the, at the end of a lease, you have three good options typically. Uh, so you can either turn that vehicle in and walk away scot-free, no negative equity, you can buy the vehicle, which is what I'm going to be doing, or you, if you are within, uh, if you're outside of that 120 day window, you can actually trade that vehicle in just like a normal uh, contract would be on a finance purchase. And so I hope this video didn't confuse the mess out of you. Hopefully it helped you somewhat. If you do have any questions about how any of this works, you can hit us up in the comments or you can just call our dealership and talk to one of our professionals at any point in time. The phone number is right there on the screen. It's 205-491-0000 if you want some more information about leasing, purchasing, and just get some general information. And if you also decide to buy one from us, that's fantastic. We would appreciate it, but you don't have to. Uh, we just want to truly provide you as much information as we can. And then if you decide you want to do business with us, fantastic. If not, that's fantastic too. This channel is never intended to sell you anything so if you have any questions let us know if you haven't already done so stay subscribed to the youtube channel with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video